you need a premium monitored ultraviolet disinfection system for your home or small commercial project to make sure that your well or lake water is bacteria free and stays that way. But you're not sure if the Vequa Pro Series is your best UV choice? No problem. In this video, I'll unbox and share with you all the information you need to know about these systems so you can decide if it's the best choice for your project. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Now, whether you're a do-it-yourself homeowner or a plumber, this video is for you. If you're looking for an alternative to chlorine disinfection for a regulated site, the Viqua Pro Series is definitely a contender. These Viqua Pro Series are available in four different sizes. The 10 gallon per minute system, the Viqua Pro 10 that we're unboxing today, but also there's the Viqua Pro 20, 30, and 50, and they're all Class A NSF approved. By the end of this video, you'll know if the Viqua Pro Series is right for you, and you'll know which size is the correct size for your project. And you'll definitely want to hang around to the end of this video because I'll also be unboxing a couple of options you'll definitely want to consider to maximize the performance of this Viqua Pro 10. And I'll also share with you what the manufacturer told me was the most common thing overlooked whenever these Pro Series are installed. And as an added bonus, I'll also demonstrate the amazing Viqua Pro Series Virtual Assistant, which is a really cool troubleshooting, installation, and general information guide. It's a real bonus. These Viqua Pro Series offer some pretty cool technology and some amazing features over their simpler system. For example, like LightWise technology, which dims the light when no water is being used, and also the optional comm center, which provides real world documentation on the system's performance. Not sure about how these UV systems work to kill bacteria? No problem. Check out my video. I'll put a link in the description down below. So let's check this puppy out. So if we look over the box, there's not a whole lot of information on there other than it does tell us that it's made in North America. It's actually made in Canada. So, all right, let's tear into this thing and see what we've got here. As always, staples are kind of ornery. Now I should mention as I'm doing this, Aviqua hasn't paid me anything to, um, to do this video. In fact, they've loaned me this equipment to do this video. So all the opinions I'm expressed here in this video are my own. All right, what's in here? So Aviqua always does a really good job of uh, packing their their products really well and uh, so this is the flow meter in here so we'll have a look at that in a minute and this is the manual Viqua always does a really good job of their manuals they're always really complete and uh, anyway and um, let's have a look what else we got here cardboard packing and wow this is the system itself this is the um, the stainless steel reaction chamber Boy, it's a real beauty. You can tell it's really, really strongly built and uh, really robust. What else have we got here? Just like Christmas morning here today, we've got uh, unknown. <laughs> got to keep the packaging neat because I got to repack this to send it back to them. And uh, so this is the, the lamp. This is the sleeve, I assume. Yep, that's the sleeve. That side. And this, I assume, is the controller. All right, so we'll toss this over here. It's obviously childproof. Over here. Okay, so this is the power cord. You can see it's a real heavy duty cord. If you're gonna plug uh, another cord into this extension cord, make sure you get an equally heavy duty cord like this, like a block heater cord. I always find those ones are good for cars for the winter time. You folks from Texas are wondering what I'm talking about, I know, but anyway. Um, pull this comm center out. Or this, uh, this isn't the comm center, this is the actual controller itself. So you can see uh, what a beauty this thing actually is. And uh, model numbers on there. And you can see, and that's where um, you plug in the power source. And it's all color coded, all the items that you plug into it. So you can see the different color coding here and the places where you plug in for the comm center. And then this is the pictogram that, that gives you the warnings. So if there's a problem with the lamp, the LED lights up there, problem with the controller that lights up there. And uh, the, the um, what's that, the flow control? 
down at the bottom and uh, the solenoid which is optional with these by the way and of course you've got the lamp replacement timer and the audible lamp change reminder and there's the heavy duty power cord that comes with the system and although these systems have built-in replaceable fusers i definitely suggest you also plug it into a surge suppressor surge suppressor is super cheap insurance this system is 120 watt power consumption and as you can see the connections are all color coded so it's definitely plug and play so to determine what size system you need, you need to calculate the flow rate coming from your well pump. Not sure how to do that? I've got a great YouTube video. I'll put a link in the description down below. So in here we also have the, the wire frame and the bottom bolt. Okay, wire frame, top bolt, bottom bolt. Whoop. And the screw. So how these systems work, they're great. So this gets installed, uh, this goes in the bottom and when we do the installation video later on, you'll see that. And then this goes in the top. And uh, you shouldn't wave your hands around, Gary, when you're doing this. Um, anyway, so it's a great way of securing the, the, the sleeve inside the, um, inside the reaction chamber. And uh, it's a totally watertight seal, but it's also relatively easy to remove when it comes time for maintenance. And whatever you do, don't throw away the sleeve removal tool. As you can see, don't. And this is the UV intensity sensor, which needs to be cleaned periodically, once a year, or if you notice that the UVT, the reading on the controller, shows that it's dropping, that tells you it's also time to clean the sensor. And as you can see, the connector is blue, so it's color-coded, so you can just plug it right in. So together with the sensor, the controller gives readout and alarms when the sensor is reading minimum UV dosage, or it's unplugged, or it just needs service. So since the sensor is an electronic safety device, you definitely want to have a spare on hand because these things won't last forever. And you want to make sure that when it, when it finally needs replacement, you don't have to wait till a new sensor comes in. You want to have it on hand and ready to go. So up next, we got the flow meter for the Pro 10. Let's check this out. All right. So these flow meters are great. I really like how they're set up. So you can see that the, they're threaded on the inside, the connectors, but they're also really easy to connect in because again, the sensors aren't gonna last forever, uh, including the flow sensor. So the point is when it comes time to replace the sensor, it's gonna be super easy to replace. You're not gonna have to cut the plumbing and uh, so you connect it up like that. And as you can see, there's an arrow indicating the direction of flow. And just so you know, it needs to be installed with this side facing up. So of course the flow sensor is what tells the system when there's no flow going through the system so that it shuts down to 50% power. And, and again, it's all plug and play. So you just plug the green into the green like that. Now this does have a flow restrictor built in. So since this is a 10 gallon per minute system, this will restrict the flow to 10 gallons per minute. If the flow restrictor, uh, sorry, the flow sensor were to fail, it would also signal a controller and the controller would go into alarm to tell you that it's failed. So this is the genuine Vequa UV lamp that comes with the system. And believe me, you definitely want to replace it with a genuine Vequa lamp in the future. Those cheap Chinese knockoffs that are out there, they are just horrible. And they're just going to end up uh, ruining the controller. So we've had lots of, we've tried them years ago and they were just awful, the, the problems that they caused. And one of the really neat things about these uh, UV lamps that come with the Pro Series is that, and by the way, there's three different models. Um, there's for the 10, the 20, and the 30 and the 50 use the same lamp. Seems odd, I know that too, but, uh, but that's what it says in the manual. Anyway, these, uh, like I say, they're good for two years of use, 18,000 hours, so you only have to replace them after two years. So you're probably wondering why this lamp is so small, and that's because they're high output, amalgam lamps, and because of that, they're about 20% smaller. And if for some reason the lamp stops working, the controller will definitely let you know. And of course, the timer built into the controller will tell you when it's time to change that lamp. And although it's very predictable when it's gonna be time to change that lamp, it's always a good idea to have a spare on hand just so that you're ready to go when the time comes. Same thing goes with the sleeve. Now, one of the, the differences about the sleeve is that they are very fragile. The end is open and it's very easily chipped and very easily cracked. And the other thing that's unique about these is that the sleeve goes in a certain way. So there's an actual arrow on the sleeve itself, but you can tell one end is tapered and the other end isn't, so you need to put it in the right way. Now, because of the Lightwise technology, when the system 
backs off on the power and of course the heat being generated because of that the sleeve stays a lot cleaner and again less maintenance but you do need to make sure that sleeve is perfectly clean because there's no use having a uv lamp in there and then have the sleeve be cloudy from scale buildup from hard water or uh, rusty deposits from iron in your water that needs to be kept clean next up is the cool touch fan which helps minimize the temperature inside the chamber and again what that does it minimizes the amount of scaling that takes place on that sleeve again reducing maintenance the cool touch fan is the same in all models and again you can see it's color coded to plug it into the controller and the controller provides troubleshooting information to tell you if the cool touch fan is unplugged if it's dirty or if it needs recalibration so this is the activation chamber by itself and as you can see it's a very strong very heavy uh, well-built stainless steel unit but it has some really cool features so one of them that i really like is that the it's a one and a quarter inch male thread on the outside but on the inside it has a one inch female thread so it gives you some uh, flexibility with installing and, uh, and this is where the sensor goes to, to check the UVT. Now these have to be mounted vertically. They cannot be mounted horizontally. And you can see it has arrows on it here, which shows you which way it should be orientated. And the other thing to keep in mind during installation of these is you have to have at least 12 inches of copper before you switch over to PEX. You can't have PEX coming right up to here because the ultraviolet light shining on that PEX will degrade it over time. And we talked earlier about the sleeve removal tool, which is a great piece of equipment because it's a super handy way to pry out that quart sleeve without damaging it when it's time for maintenance or replacement. And just so you know, the power cords are available in 110 or also 220 volt. This lightwise dimming technology is really special. And here's why. It dims the lamp by 50% under no flow conditions, which reduces power consumption by 50% obviously saving you money, but it also reduces the temperature inside the UV. And as I say, it results in less maintenance due to less sleeve scaling and eliminates complicated mechanical sleeve cleaning devices. There's some UV systems out there, older ones granted, but there's some out there that actually have scrapers that run up and down the, the sleeve to remove the scale. Well, because of the lower temperatures, you don't need that. But believe me, those scrapers and the motor that's involved, a lot of maintenance to those systems. Lower temperatures also eliminates the need and wasted um, water of hot water purging systems. So again, the older systems we had to put in this little valve that every once in a while it would purge some of the water out um, to reduce the temperature inside the, the stainless steel chamber. And so we don't need to do that anymore. It was a waste of water, waste of uh, complexity, and uh, so that's fine. And these detect a minimum flow rate um, to two gallons per minute. So if it's below two gallons per minute or zero gallons per minute, that's when it shuts down to 50% power. Not zero, it doesn't shut right off, it goes down to 50% power. So a great feature. All right, let's take a quick look at Viqua's virtual assistant. I think you'll find this really interesting. So you just load up the page and then you go to next. And so you can see they have a troubleshooting section. So you click on that and it asks you to click on one of the LEDs showing in the picture that is blinking red or you have a concern about. So in this example, they show number five and then they ask you, has the sleeve or sensor been cleaned? And they ask you, are there any other um, uh, LEDs that are blinking red to help you solve the problem? So I think that's great. There's a lot of other information here too. Um, if we go back to home, you also, they have a parts list. So in uh, a couple of years, when it's time to replace that lamp and you want to find out your Pro 10, which lamp you need, 602-854. You can order it from our e-commerce store, waterestore.com or waterestore.ca in Canada. So one of the great things that Vico provides in their manual is this schematic that actually shows how the systems are mounted, but also dimensions. And it's great because you can plan the size of plywood you need for a backer board for all this, but it also tells you different things in terms of the dimensions you need for different offsets and things like that. Great planning tool. What about warranty? Absolutely. A 10 year warranty on the ultraviolet stainless steel chamber, five year warranty on the electrical components and one year warranty on the lamp, the sleeve and the sensors. So for a UV system to be a monitor system, there has to be three things in place. One, you have to have a sensor to monitor the quality of the water that's passing through the ultraviolet disinfection system to make sure it's compatible with ultraviolet disinfection to kill the bacteria. Two, you have to have a flow 
restrictor to make sure you're not passing water through faster than the system can um, can kill the bacteria. So for example, this Pro 10 is 10 gallons per minute. So it has a 10 gallon per minute flow restrictor built into the flow sensor that restricts that. The third thing you need is a solenoid. So a solenoid is optional in these systems, but we've got one here, so let's have a look at that. So again, it comes with the cable, it's color coded, so it plugs right into the controller in the right spot. And then you can see this is the solenoid here by itself. And you can see that it's uh, it's quite well built. And what I like about these, it has these pretty much quick connect type of fittings that you can just unscrew and replace this because the solenoid won't last forever. And again, for a, a light commercial or a, a home where you're putting one of these systems in, I definitely suggest you have a spare solenoid on hand because if something goes wrong with the solenoid and it shuts off your water flow and you have to order that replacement solenoid, it might take a while. So having one on hand means that you can just swap it out. So another optional extra I definitely like you to consider is the comm center. So we've got one here, so let's check this out. So this is the comm center here. And again, you can see the cable that comes with it that attaches it to the controller. So when it comes to the comm center, like it says here, it's a great option when you require a visual display of the dose, the alarm history, and other data logging. It also features dry contacts. Also supplies significantly information about the system when used with multiple pro UV systems. So again, you can you have one comm center and you can connect up a bunch of these um, ultraviolet disinfection systems to it. I believe it's up to six and you can monitor it all through one comm center. So it also shows the actual countdown days remaining. It, um, it has a data storage on an SD card and, uh, and with a, a 512 megabyte SD card, you can store 18 years worth of information. So it's great. And it can also be used with the MaxTrack software from Viqua to store information on a PC. And by the way, if you're looking for more information about these Pro 10 ultraviolet disinfection systems, you can go to our websites, either waterestore.com in the US or waterestore.ca in Canada. We offer free shipping and discount pricing. So in planning for this video, I spoke with Viqua in terms of what's the most common concern? What happens most often that causes a concern for the end user when they install one of these ultraviolet disinfection systems? What do they struggle with? And they said, hands down, the biggest problem was people did not do the pre-treatment. In other words, they didn't have the water tested to find out if it was hard, if there was iron in the water, if there's tannins in the water, if there's color in the water. Those kinds of things need to be taken care of before the system is installed. So you need to make sure that the water is colorless and 100% compatible with ultraviolet um, disinfection to make sure these systems work properly. The other thing they mentioned is if you're dealing with groundwater or surface water like lake water, make sure you're installing a filter that can deal with the cysts in the water. You also need wanted to make sure you get rid of that too. So to help you determine whether your water is compatible with ultraviolet disinfection system, we have an information sheet that we ask you to fill out to complete it and then email it to us so we can help determine if your water is compatible and if it's not, what you need for pre-treatment to make your water compatible. So I've got a link to those sheets down below. So if you're not sure where these ultraviolet disinfection systems go in the chain of uh, water filtration equipment, I've got this great infographic. Definitely encourage you to check it out. So basically what we're doing is we're removing the dirt from the water, then we're removing iron from the water, then we're going on to soften the water, make sure there's no scale that's gonna build up inside the ultraviolet disinfection system. We wanna make sure we remove any tannins from the water, and then it goes through the UV to kill the bacteria. What are my final thoughts? I like it. If you're looking for a full featured, monitored ultraviolet disinfection system that requires very minimal service and easy do-it-yourself service, this is the one. Click here for your next video on UV filtration and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below. I read them all, I'd love to answer yours.